Welcome in, everyone, to another edition of the Brian Gregory Show. Jim Lighthall and the head coach himself, Brian Gregory, as we sit down and talk Bulls basketball for a full hour. Coach, good to see you again. We just worked last night, the game at home here, but you took care of business. And I was going to say nothing probably going on in the last 12 hours or so, but that's not the case at all. Yeah, it's uh, 2020, <laughs> you know. Uh, we've we've mentioned it many times, being able to be flexible, pivoting, uh most important, staying safe, staying healthy, doing what we're what what we've been doing, which has been effective, um, effective in avoiding. And I, you know, I, I I think you know a lot of coaches around the country are talking, you know, a lot of different things, just trying to do the very best that they can, and in a way, hope that you know you're able to to stay healthy and then no one gets the virus during this time. And if they do, then you deal with it appropriately. But we've been, you know. So far, pretty good, and unfortunately, the team that we're supposed to play on Saturday is now on on pause, uh, which is the new term that they're using okay. now. Teams are on pause, uh, and uh, you know, so we're shifting gears. We'll still play in Atlanta, and we're waiting to finalize uh, the the game that we'll play. So, for folks that don't know, as you're hearing the show tonight uh, for the first time, it happened. I found out around nine nine thirty this morning. LSU was out. Uh, then it only took. A couple of hours, maybe, and then Wofford is in. Right. So that's going to be the team that steps in. How quickly was this thing moving this morning? Well, we we, we got a you know a call late last night uh, regarding the possibility of LSU uh, with the contact tracing. Again, it's not a player; it's um, a member of the peripheral staff. Um, and going through the protocol, they felt that it was important that they they hit the pause button. So we started going into the mode last night of, you know, different options. So throughout most of the evening and into the early morning, it's going through different, you know, stat sheets, scouting reports, calling people in case mm. team A, B, C, D, E would be available. Uh, and as we went through it, team A dropped off, and then we added team F. And then we're trying to, through the promoter, Chris Williams out there, trying to find, you know, at this point uh, – Someone who was available, someone who could travel-wise get there fairly easy, someone who could start the testing protocol immediately, which was Im imperative for not only us, but it was written in the bylaws of the event that he's running. Uh, and Wofford met those you know, criteria. Also, uh, a team that over the last four or five years, obviously, has had tremendous success. Uh, we played them here last year. Very good team, uh, and you know, fit uh, you know, kind of the the number wise that we were looking for. Uh, you know, so we need to play. We yeah. we we looked at different options. Anybody in the state of Florida available for us to play at home or even go there and play? Everybody is playing, and that's one of the challenges that we've come up with. A lot of the teams in our in the state have not been shut down are continuing to play games and have scheduled games. So uh, we felt it was important to continue to make the trip, go back to Atlanta. we got a lot of Atlanta kids, obviously, on our team and a great opportunity to play in a tremendous event. Well, we'll talk about Wofford in that tournament in particular a little bit later on in the show, but you did work on Tuesday night here inside the Yingling Center. You got a big victory against the Stetson Hatters in a game where at one point in the mid uh, midway through the first half you put together a 13 nothing run kind of gave you some cushion, and then a 7 nothing run to close the first half, which then put them at arm's length the rest of the way, I thought. Yeah, and we took as big as a 21-point lead with about 10 minutes to go. Uh, I thought the first half uh, defensively throughout from start to finish was really, really good. Um, some 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 things that obviously we need to, you know, always always work on is uh, we, we are a, a, a team that, you know, plays team defense. So sometimes we actually send too many guys to help, and then we got to work on that. Okay. You know, it's only one to the help, and then the other three have to adjust, and then you got to scramble out. And I thought we did probably in eight different situations. We did it well six out of the eight. Now the other two they hit threes, and that's you know that's how those team you know get get threes is off on drives and scramble situations. But I thought offensively. In the first half, with the 12 assists, uh, with only five turnovers, with our shooting percentage, with our ability to score at 
at the basket and kick out and make some threes was really, really impressive. And and then, you know, what you do is you, you, you get the, a 21-point lead and, and you got to fight human nature a little yeah. bit. Coast a little bit. Yeah. yeah. And, and um, you know, the problem or the challenge for us is, you know, we usually play 13 non-conference games. And so that's going to give guys opportunity to play. Guys who haven't played a lot, Chaplin, Adoro, Russell, uh, Ray Sean, uh, Caleb as a freshman, X coming off an injury, Lex coming off an injury. Well, that was our fifth game. You know, we, we and, and, and time's running out because next week it's, you know, obviously we had LSU, Walford's a really good team. But it, it you know, it's real now. Yeah. You know, we're, we're not sure if we're going to be able to reschedule that seventh non-conference game. Uh, so not a lot of, you know, we got to get guys time, but, but guys need to continue to play better and different things like that. And when we had that opportunity in the second half, I was just most disappointed. We didn't take advantage of that. We didn't, uh, uh, we, we kind of put our f foot off the gas a little bit. Again, human nature, but as I tell our guys all the time, that's one of the things that we're fighting. You know, you have to, to be really good and, and, and to reach your full potential, you have to fight human nature in a lot of areas. And, uh, you know, I, I thought, you know, when you look at share number-wise, we were good offensively and we were pretty good defensively. Uh, so it's just, you know, one of those things that you, you win the game, you get the win, and, uh, again, when you're in when you're in in the phase that we're in with this building process, you, you never take for granted a win. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean. You never take for granted a win, so you feel good about that. But there was also a little not as fulfilled because I wanted to see us do a little more, and so yeah. now that challenges you in the next couple practices and into the next game. Well, I would imagine the seniors come into play in this with. David Collins and Justin Brown, because they've been in your system, they know what to expect from you. They know how to finish games. Collins played brilliant, I thought, yesterday. Eight of ten from the floor. Tied his career high with nine rebounds. He gave you one of his best games. Yeah, he did. He made really good decisions. Played off of two feet on the drive. Uh, with some really good passes. Uh, you know, some kick out. Scored in transition, getting out. Scored in the half court. Took the open jump shot when it was there. His most complete game of the season, for sure. What about Alexis Yetna? Because we're starting to see him get to where you were talking about a couple weeks ago. But now his three-point shooting, and this shouldn't come as a huge surprise because two years ago he started like gangbusters from three, then cooled off. Now this year he's shooting 61% from beyond the arc already. Yeah, you know, I think what, one of the things, Jim, that, that you see with Lex right now is, you know, the next phase of his kind of regrowth is going to be his – comfort level around the basket because that's where there's contact that's where there's bodies that's mm -hmm. where you know and, and so for 12 months he p never played with contact because in his rehab whatever shooting he did it was space it was he's shooting the ball very well from the three and that's part of our system and I like our big guys to be able to shoot he's still a ways away from that comfort level around the basket um and and uh, getting us some easy putbacks and, and so forth. He had a couple opportunities yesterday, but overall I'm pleased with his development over the last two weeks. You're one of those guys that you're not in love with the three, like some programs in the country that are. You made, you made eight yesterday, eight of 18. Uh, you guard the three very well again, holding the teams to 28%. It's an interesting dynamic, the way basketball is shifting to the three-point shot, but yet you have bigs and you utilize those bigs. Yeah, and and... and the one thing is, I I love threes when they go in. <laughs> yeah, you, you you know what I mean. I mean, I'm not. Uh, but I I just think research confirms it. Unless you build your team strictly to be a three point shooting team, the best threes are inside out, mm -hmm. where you get it into the post and you kick it out, or you drive it into the lane and you kick it out. And so. Um, Again, that's a that's a that's a field thing. So we still want to get paint touches first, especially when last night when Stetson did go to the zone. Almost all our threes were either in a transition where we pushed it, or off penetration and kick, post out and kick. And it's just an area that we need to you know again continue to evolve in, um, and and make good decisions on that. But you know you you you, you go eight of eighteen. 
that puts you in a pretty good spot because that means you're being very efficient with that shot. 299th career win for you last night. Does that mean anything to you? or? Well, it means that, you know, I, I've been very blessed to coach a lot of good players. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, I've been very, very fortunate to, to work in, you know, three high-quality programs uh, and uh, tremendous staff in terms of buying into my vision and what's and, and what's important. I always say that, um, you know, I I've been I've been given by the good man upstairs a lot more than I've earned it. You know what I mean? And I say that in, in, with all honesty because I've been I've been very I've been very blessed with that. There's no there's no question about it. Uh, and and you know I would not. You know, when whenever 300 comes, it's it'll be a great milestone. But I'll be really proud about doing it here at South Florida during the the process of us building a program of excellence. Well, now over 50 wins here. Uh, that's part of the 299 as of this moment. One of those was Florida Gulf Coast. Uh, one of the games that was played since the last time you and I sat down. Michael Durr had 14 points, nine rebounds, two blocks. He was on the honor roll by the American Conference. Yeah, you know, and and uh, you know, you you see his growth. And 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 what ends up happening with with a player of Mike's caliber and the growth that he's shown as a coach, now you want more. You know what? You want it. You want it night in and and night out. Yeah. Uh, you want that to be one of your staples going into every game, knowing he's going to get double figures in points and he's going to get close to or more than double figures in in rebounds. And that's the that's his next step. That's his next step, and he he has a skill package where his ability, the versatility in scoring. So if they're taking away the post, then he's got to get it in running the court, offensive rebounds, spacing when it when it's when it's available. Uh, if they're taking away the post scoring, you know. Stetson last night trapped him in the post. He didn't handle it well on a couple of occasions, mm -hmm. which was surprising because he we've seen it. He knows what to do, and he's usually pretty good with it, you know. Um, but that was good to see with the honor roll, and I think only it you're going to see more and more of that as we continue to move on. I like the way he finished last night on a couple of occasions in the in the couple of other games he was around the basket would try to lay it in was missing those shots a couple times last night he just went up and dunked it which is probably what he should be doing yeah that's there. what he should yeah. be yeah, yeah. That, that's what he should be doing but in order to do that you got to be low and ready to go so you can explode and get into the into the finish um and and again it's it, it's a read there's time to space and there's time to play the power game and as a as a junior coming into his own he's starting to get a little better feel for that all right, when we continue, we got a lot to talk about. We'll, we'll talk about the Bubbleville and Mohegan Sun, a unique situation that you went up there to, uh, to Connecticut. I want to talk about the landscape in college basketball right now because there's so many things going on and there's no fans. It's hard. You and I have talked about generating your own energy sometimes, mm -hmm. home and away. So a lot to get to on this Brian Gregory Show. We'll come back. We'll take a timeout. This is Bulls Unlimited. Welcome back to the Brian Gregory Show. Jim Lighthall and the head coach, BG. Bulls fresh off a win against Stetson last night inside the Yingling Center. Took care of business. Going to take a look back, coach, because the last time you and I sat down, the tournament at the Mohegan Sun was still in the distance. Bubbleville was a concept. You've now gone through it with the two games against Rhode Island and Virginia Tech. I know you didn't get the results you wanted there, but tell me about the experience and living in that bubble because you could eat, sleep, practice, and play in the same place. Yeah, it, w it, w it was unique. Um, and they did a tremendous job, uh, for the five days that we were there. Uh, we came in contact when I say contact within 30 feet of another team. And there was, when, when we got there, there was, I think 16 teams there, mm -hmm. uh, one time other than when we competed on the, on the court. And they did a really good job of having everybody isolated, the daily testing, the meals. Uh, you know, it was it was different. You had to get get your meal and then go back up to the into the area where each team had their own meeting space and so forth. Well, that's different because usually the kids can go down and pretty much step up to the trough and yep, eat as yep, much as they yep, want to eat. Yeah. So you know, once they figured it out, in, in later in day one, it was. 
two to go ca carry okay. things back up to Getting the thing. Getting smart, yeah, right? Right. Of, you know, because <laughs> you really had a 15-minute segment that you could go through. Yeah. Then they sanitized it, and then the next team came through. Okay. So it was, it was the the protocol and the um, the process that they put everybody through was was I think doable. I think doable, and I think some of the other events that were going on did not go to the extreme that they did. And up until the last day of Bubbleville, once a team got there, no one had any positive tests. Okay. So it worked. Mm -hmm. It definitely worked. And uh, great facility, great arena to play in, uh, great practice areas as well uh, to get your shoot around in and different things like that. So I thought – we didn't play as well as I would like, but I thought in terms of the environment and maybe a, a glimmer of what the postseason might look like, I definitely think it's doable. From what I've heard, there were security guards on the floors guarding the elevators. I guess as a coach, you love this because you knew where your kids were at all times. For the kids, they're probably twiddling their thumbs a lot in the hotel room. Yeah, you know, our guys are smart. They bring their game stations and okay. different things like that. Yep, and, yep. and we had study hall. You know, and that was – that was, Different, because you could not go around anywhere without the security guard. Okay. And you went up the back elevators, and you yeah, and and the hallways had to be clear. So they, walkie-talkie. South Florida is heading down to meal. Okay. And then because of the study hall and different things, you know we're accustomed to all right, one group stays in 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 the in the conference room that we're in, and we we have a study hall while the other eight guys go upstairs or whatever the case might be. So we, we, we put those security guards through the ringer because we had them going back and forth. You know, scout team shows up early for prep, so now they got to go back up there and get the rest of the guys. Uh, so we made them work, There's, and, and uh, they did a great job of it. I know when I'm on the road with you guys, I like a late-night snack. I like to go down and get a candy bar or something. Was that off-limits or off, what? Off-limits. Okay. Off-limits, yep. Greg and uh, Travis did a good job. They set up some snacks at the end of the hallway that you could go. Okay. And uh, the only problem is every time I went, I they they had to check my who I was and that I was okay to be on the on the floor and different things like that. So it was interesting. There was no uh, don't you know who I am card. No, you can't no, play no, that no, there. No, that, no, there was none of that. There was <laughs> that that card was eliminated with the virus. They said no, doesn't matter. Yeah. Uh, let's check your ID and make sure you're able to be on this floor with the team. So before you went there, you had the home game against Florida College. That was your opener. I bring that up because you won the game easily. Uh, it was a game that you talked about. We wanted to get a win. We wanted to be healthy and get ready for our trip to Connecticut. And I bring that up because Fort Hayes just beat Kansas State last night at Kansas State. And you were telling me anybody can beat anybody this time of year in the situation everyone is in. Yeah, you know, because, again, you never know how much practice time teams have had. Uh, you know, and, and, and when you play those teams, man, it, it, it's hard. Um, the one thing, as I told you, when we went with our small lineup, we took a 10-point lead. Then when we went with the, back to the bigger lineup uh, and went zone so we didn't have to chase around everybody, yeah. we took an 18-point lead. And I just go back to when, you know, we played similar teams. I've done that in the first half, and it's extended the lead. You know, for me, the most important thing – even though I got Prince and Russell and Lex and Mike out there chasing around six foot two inch guards off of flare screens, which is they're, they're never going to do. Right. Uh, it's just good just to get out there and, and compete against somebody else. Well, that Florida College team is a team that shoots a ton of threes. You see Stetson, who shoots a lot of threes. Wofford's going to shoot a lot of threes. Yep. And this goes back to our earlier conversation where teams are starting to morph into these, you know, speed and space where they're just trying to play five out because they don't have the big guys to contend with big teams like Right, you. exactly. And, and, and you know, still you have to challenge your bigs that, you know, uh, if you can't defend that action, uh, then we're going to have to get someone else that, 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 that can and, and change up what we're doing on offense a little bit. So it's a, big, it's a, it's a challenge for the big guys for sure. We've had some weird start times, games in the 11 o'clock hour. You've had your weeknight games at 5. Uh, this coming Saturday will be a more normal 2:30. Uh, what about the atmosphere with no fans in the building? How has that been for you? Well, you you know I, I talked to our guys about it. I I think one thing you're going to see uh, 
there won't be a huge home court advantage. You know what I mean? Duke's finding that out. Yeah, aren't they? I mean, yeah. and 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 you know, I think there are sometimes games are being are played, and the home team has to get the energy from the crowd to get going a little bit. Uh, I think of the Kentucky Richmond game, and that's no knock on Richmond, but when it was close at Rupp Arena, usually Kentucky's able to to use the energy from the crowd to move, you know to kind of push ahead, and that that didn't happen. Um, more so than ever, having energy guys on your team that bring it every day and that bring it for every game is going to be critical. And you're going to see the teams that, that have energy guys. You're going to see teams that are consistent in what they do daily. They go out there. doesn't matter where you're playing. It doesn't matter if a crowd's cheering for you, if it's a packed house or not. Uh, you're just relying on the things that you do day in and day out. Those are the teams that are going to be successful. It seems to me that the way you start a game is even more important now this year than in years past because, like you said, you're, you're creating your own buzz, your own excitement. And if you don't have that when you step on the floor, it's so hard to get it going midway through the game. That, that's why you, you got to have some guys off the bench that are spark spark okay. guys, you know, uh, because, like you said, you're, it, it's not like – if you get off to a bad start, you're down 14, 15 points, and now you cut it to 10, and now the crowd gets into it. You're not getting that. Yeah, that's you're what I thought happened to you guys at Connecticut. Both games, you you get down early because you, you shot poorly, get it to about 10. It's when you need that little push, and there was no push there. No, no yeah. push. Yeah. And 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 again, you know, one of the things that we we have to, you know, and it's it's going to be harder than in normal years because, as I said, you would have 13 games to develop your bench, develop your rotation. We're going to have six before we hit the real stuff with Cincinnati, Wichita State, and Memphis. How has the atmosphere been for you inside the Engling Center? I thought they've done a pretty good job with, yeah. with the music and the PA and yeah. making it feel as normal as possible. Yeah, they, I, I think they've done a you know really good job of that. Um, you know, the, it, it, if you watch the, the, the clips on, on, on the TV, on the TV broadcast, it looks good. Uh, which was something I said is really, really important because a lot of people are going to be watching. Mm -hmm. A lot of people are going to be listening. Uh, do are we are we presenting a first class product in everything from the radio to how the court looks to the introductions? And I think we're doing a great job of that. So let's talk about the hoops giving event, which is coming up here in Atlanta. Wofford now in for LSU. You saw Wofford last year. They love the three point shot. It's a team that's two and one. They've had three of their last four games canceled. They're ready to play some basketball. Yeah, you know, talking with the coach, he 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 said, "Hey, we got we got to play some games." Yeah. You know what I mean? And and uh, you know, so a great challenge for us. Uh, you know, we're gonna have to do you know do a really good job defensively. That same Richmond team that beat Kentucky, Walford took them down to the down to the wire just a week ago. Um, so we're going to have to play very, very well in order to be successful as we go back to Atlanta. And the Atlanta area is important for you because when you look at your roster, you got four kids on your roster from the Georgia area, mainly around Atlanta. I know those recruits can't come to the game because there won't be any fans, but it's important for you to play well in that area of the country. Yeah, no, no doubt about it. Atlanta is one of our key recruiting stops. Um, we've been, you know, had really good success there. And at the same time, uh, even though the fans won't be able to go, it's an event that we're going to look to play in every year because the opportunity to play in LSU, Auburn's playing in it, Alabama's playing in it, Clemson's playing in it. It's a great opportunity for us you know, on a neutral site game in a great environment to, to play a high-level game. I can't believe I'm going to say this, but we're a week away from conference play starting here. Is is the schedule maker didn't do you any favors? You get Cincinnati to open on the road, nine straight NCAA tournament appearances for them outside of last year, but certainly one of the class programs in this league, and you're going to get tested right away. Yeah, they're obviously very, very good. Uh, High-level point guard transfer in and DeJulius from Michigan. Uh You'll remember the kid from Colgate. There's no way I'm going to be able to say his yeah, name. Yeah, I can't either. Yeah, yeah. 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 Uh, Fifth-year graduate who's really, really good. Uh, and then the three other starters are, are back. So, you know, very high-level team, well-coached, tough. Uh, you know, playing on the road, we're going to have to get off to, a, like you said, a good start there. And, and 
play with really good physicality defensively and then take care of the ball offensively because we had him beat here last year. We just didn't take care of the ball the last 10 minutes. And and physicality, I think, is important whenever you play Cincinnati because through the years they are a physical bunch all the regardless of the coach. Right. Yeah. They just you know there are some programs that's just who they are and how they do things. You know, uh, and probably the most physical and toughest kid they have on the team is the skinniest and key in in the Williams kid. You know, he's just really a, a high level player in terms of being able to hurt you on the glass, on dribble drives, and he's shooting the ball so much better. I don't know how much you've had a chance to look at the league at all or, or maybe catch a game here and there on TV, but do you think it's more important this year to win your league because you don't know what the postseason is going to be. You don't even know if there's going to be any at-large bids available by the end of the year. So does that put the onus on we got to win the league to make sure we can get in the postseason? Well, you know, no one know what knows what's going to go on. Yeah. So, you, you know, you – you there there'll be guys saying hey the most important thing is to win the conference tournament because that's right before the NCAA and mm -hmm. that's automatic bid I, who who knows what's going to happen I know one thing you're going to have to play really well every single night in our league because we're we're like everybody else we've gotten better but so is everybody else you know what I mean mm -hmm. so is everybody else and who knows what's going to happen you, you because of the way things go you may end up playing four straight road games. You know what I mean? Uh, game canceled here. You got to make up a game here, different things like that. So it, 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 it's about, uh, you know, being as consistent as you possibly can. Well, I know the last 12 hours for you have been stressful. Hopefully the next 36 or 48 are really boring yeah. and you can just practice and, and focus on playing basketball. Yeah, games. you know, I mean, it, it, it's – it's um. You go into it knowing that you're going to have to make some adjustments. That doesn't make the adjustments any easier. <laughs> you, you you know what I mean? Um, and, you know, like with our players, I like to gather them around and give them the information. A lot of times they're getting the information on the on the Twitter and Instagram before I could even, even think about making yeah. phone calls or let alone bringing them all in, especially during this week with finals and different things like that. Uh, that's why it's, you know, again, always important to communicate beforehand. Hey, some changes are going to be made. Whoever they say we play, let's go out there. And as I said to you last night, I think it's critical that as a unit, every game we get to play, we take full advantage of. Because like that, it, they could shut it down. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, and, and if we could just – muster that, that that attitude and that passion every single day, then the one thing I know is we're going to get better as a team and we're going to play better as well. Well, Coach, we always appreciate the time. Thank you. Uh, hopefully your schedule-making days are over for a, yeah. for a while yeah. and we can get these off without a hitch. You got it. Thanks. All right, that's Bulls head coach Brian Gregory. When we come back, one of the all-time greats in Bulls history, Ultron Jackson, joins us. The Brian Gregory Show continues on Bulls Unlimited. And welcome back to the Brian Gregory Show. Jim Lighthall joined now by Ultron Jackson. What a joy and a pleasure it is to see this guy sitting across from me. He used to rule this building at one point about 20 years ago. Ultron, so good to see you. I really appreciate uh, you spending some time with me. You know, the only time we used to get sp spend together was we'd get about two minutes during a commercial break when I was in the postgame show. You'd run over, say hi, we'd talk for a minute or so, and then you'd run back to your seat or whatever. But I really appreciate you sitting down with us for a few minutes. Yeah, it's, it's, it's a pleasure, and I'm happy to, to be back and be around you guys. And like I said, I did the show with Derek Sharp a while back, a couple weeks ago, and now I'm doing the show with you. So I'm just I'm just happy, ecstatic, and I'm ready to talk about these bulls. <laughs> well, there's so much to talk about, and we're going to talk, obviously, about what you've been doing, what you're doing now with this program. Uh, you're back here at USF. Let's go through the resume, first of all, for folks that may or may not know. Uh, came from Sarasota Riverview High School, yeah. played here in 1998 to 2002, number two all-time leading scorer, over 2,000 points. I was going through the Conference USA record book because the Bulls were in Conference USA at the time. Your name is still all over that thing. Two-time sixth man of the year, three-time all-conference pick, 122 career games. I, people talk about your scoring. You know what I like to talk about? looking at number 11 at the top of that 1-3-1 zone because you were a terror up there 
with all the steals and the defense and making guards lob it over the top. Did anybody ever talk about your defense anymore? Um, No. <laughs> you definitely have to bring it up. But like I said, you know, Greenberg was a defensive coach of mine. And um, so when I came in as a freshman, he told me and BB, hey, I know guys, you guys can score the ball, but guys got to play defense at this level to be successful. I don't see a whole lot of 1-3-1 zone anymore. Do you see it that much? No, not, no, no, not really. I mean, it's basically a, a, a janky defense. You yeah. Know, you know, try to throw guys off, and and um and that's what Greenberg always wanted to do. You know, throw throw teams off if they scoring and got a good rhythm. Hey, let's go to this one three one. Try to stop these guys. With your length, it was always a problem at six foot six, and, and the wingspan that you had, it was a problem for the guards at the top of that one three one. I really enjoyed watching you play it. Uh, you made some money playing a little bit of basketball after yeah. as well uh, overseas, didn't you? Yeah, I was in uh, Germany, France, and Hungary. So, and also played in. Uh, the NBA D League, the D League now, which is called the G League. So it was it was fun times, and now that I'm back here and I'm just ready to help these guys out as much as I can. We'll talk about your current role here in just a second. You got your degree, Interdisciplinary Social Sciences. I know you worked at Tuttle Elementary yeah. School down in Sarasota and also a long stint at IMG Academy. Yeah, I was there uh, training pros. It was great, and also coached high school there. And just to touch base with a lot of top collegiate players and a lot of professional players that was there, just to name a few, more uh, Maurice Hawkley's, Iman Shumpert, Dwayne Wade even came by, did a great, uh, Gatorade commercial. So it was great seeing some guys that I knew and former guys that guys that I didn't know. When you had your degree from here, did you know what you wanted to do? I mean, you, you've you've done some teaching, yeah. uh, spe spe specifically in the reading area, but now you're kind of drifting into the coaching area. Uh, I always love people. I love being okay. around people, and uh, especially young people. And uh, one thing, my mom and Leroy Selman always taught me, hey, give back because somebody did it for you. Well, you're certainly doing that, and now you're getting your hands wet here with the coaching staff with Brian Gregory and Tom Harrion and Bunch. I know BG wanted to get you on staff here for a long time, but now yeah. it just feels like the timing has been right. Yeah, time is it right. I mean, thanks for the pandemic. Not in a bad way. <laughs> <laughs> but, no, great staff, and uh, BG's doing a great job. Like I said, he's a, a program builder, and him and his staff are doing a great job, and, Right now we, we're three and two, and uh, we head into Atlanta, and things are going to get brighter. You're the director of player personnel or player development. That is, it's a yep. it's a it's a lengthy title. It's an important title. Tell folks at home that don't know what it is. What do you do? Uh, I basically um, academics. Look over the guys' academics. Um, study hall. Since the pandemic is going on, a lot of guys is taking uh, online classes, and. Um, learning some compliance rules, which is, you know, when you're playing, you're not worried about that you stuff. You don't care about it. Yeah, right, you don't care right, about it. Right. So just to get involved in that and uh, just try to learn anything that uh, Coach Brian Gray and the staff need to do, and uh, I'm just willing to learn. When you come in here on a daily basis, I, I'm sure people are asking you to do a bunch of different things. One of the things you cannot do is be on the floor and coach, though. No, I can't be on the floor, no. So just just listen here and uh, give them one if they need one, and I'm listening to them if, if, I, if they need to give me one. Everybody gets their start somewhere. This is how you get your start. Is this something that you can see yourself doing 20 years from now and working on a staff and being around teams again? Oh, uh, no doubt. I love it. Yeah. I love it. <laughs> is it something that you thought when you did come out of college that you would ultimately drift to? Yes. Yes. I didn't know uh, which level, but like I said, I just wanted to be around young people and uh, because I was one of them. I understand how hard it is to get to this level, the time that your parents and your loved ones put into it. And uh, to see kids and to get to this pedestal, all they want to do is just make their they family proud. I talked to Brian Gregory when he got hired, and I said, to me, Ultron seems like a perfect fit because he's played here at a high level, he had success at a high level, but he's still young enough, I think, that he can relate to the players. Is that yes. kind of how you see it from yes, your side? Yes, yes, yes. And I just thank for the opportunity. And um, BG gives me, hey, talk to the guys, make sure the guys head on and make sure they're doing the right things off the court. And, and just be in, in a, a good example for those guys, and, and that's what I try to do. You were an Iron Man here. That's the one thing <laughs> I remember. Like, you didn't miss games, but I heard at one time that you didn't miss a practice. Is that accurate? Yes, yes. Never missed a game, never missed a practice. I mean, you know how Coach Greenberg is. You know, you miss a practice, first thing he'll say, you're a marshmallow. <laughs> you saw. <laughs> is that so, his word? Yeah, that's okay. his favorite word. So, you're a marshmallow, Jackson. You're a marshmallow. So, I just try to, hey, bring, bring, my, work to, bring my workload to practice and, and games every day because – you know, I love the game. I love playing. So I just want to make the fans and the university administration proud. So, you know, when you step out on the court, you got people.
coming to see you. So you just want to make them proud as well. I would think that's a message that you could relay to the kids now because uh, as we talk all the time with kids that are both in school and then out, it goes so fast. Yeah. Ultron, it goes so fast yeah. that they're going to wish they had one more practice or one more game. Man, I keep telling them, I keep telling them. But like I said, I was one of them. So it's just like you only got one more practice, one more game, guys. Yeah. It's going to be in. It, your four years will go by quick. So – you know, they're they, they going to get it. It's just a matter of time. And like I say, you got a great group that understand, that want to win, smart kids, you know, great students. So it's a great group. I'm glad that I'm a, uh, I can be a part of it. I can tell how much you love it because our new vantage point for the bro- radio broadcast is just behind the bench, yeah. behind the baseline. And uh, as soon as something good happens, the first guy off the bench is you. Yeah. Uh, you you look like you're like you're playing again. I mean, you you are that engaged, aren't you? I mean, I'm, I'm very engaged. So you know, I love it. And like I say, Greenberg's called me the Energizer Bunny. So <laughs> I mean, that's always going to be in me. Just bringing energy, energy each and every day to this program. How much do you have a chance to catch up with old teammates or old coaches? I mean, we're we're talking about a pretty tight fraternity here. Yes, I talked to Greenberg. Matter of fact, um, I think Friday I talked to okay. him. Okay, just to touch base with him. Just you know try to pick his brain a little bit, but he he's doing fine. And also talked to um, a couple of teammates. I talked to Gary Morris like two days ago. You know, friends, uh, Andrew Frazier live in the area. Yep. Always, you know, texting and talking to him. Cedric Smith, Arthur Rees, uh Terrence Leather, just talked to him like three days ago. Okay. So, you know, we, we since I'm back, I definitely love to connect with the guys. Yeah. When I was, uh, when I was looking back and thinking back and I realized, I don't know if you even know this, but, 2000, 2001 team. When you look at that roster, Altron, you had Man. five 1,000 point scores on the roster all at the same time. Now, they didn't have 1,000 points at the time, but future 1,000 point scores you, BB, Reggie Cohn, Cedric Smith, and a very young, wet behind the ears, Terrence Leather. That roster was really good. It was really good. You know what I mean? We went to the IT, I think, what, 2000, 2002. And that year you're talking about. The stakes was high. Mm. So as I went to the NCAA tournament, but we fell short. So, and, and I can re- get these guys, you know, we was, hey, you're supposed to be a tournament team. Things didn't work out. Things happen. So I just get on the message, hey, some things just don't work out, but you just got to keep keep fighting, keep fighting, and, and keep playing those seeds. Did you realize that at that time that you were on such a special roster with so many guys that were going to be accomplished or were accomplished at that time? No, I didn't. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't. Yeah. I didn't because you, you don't know because – you so caught up in, hey, I got to do this, do this each and every day. And then now you look back like, wow, Cedric did this, Terrence did this, Reggie did this, and we all know what, what B.B. did. Yeah, w- when you talk about B.B. Walden, it's like it was all trying to B.B. show for yeah. a lot. But but then you had Cedric Smith, who's up there in Conference USA and steals and Reggie and yep. assists and threes, and Terrence did everything. Uh, that bunch was really, really good and dynamic. And, and you know what I like? The energy. Yeah, the energy. I mean, yeah, Every well, night. Every night, Greenberg talked about that. Hey, no matter what the results are, but you got to bring it. You got fans in the stands, and you got administration here, and you know the president that was here at the time, and you got to make these people proud because they put a lot into it. And he always, he always made a, a point of emphasis that hey, do it for the people, do it for your family. How much do you like being in the building? I know there's not fans here, but there might be some fans maybe down the line as the university will decide here uh, once we get closer to conference play. You like performing in front of people, and, and I'm sure you still like it when there's a full building and the place gets rocking. Yeah, it does, it is, especially with a with uh, re, uh, new gym and a new practice facility. So it's great. I mean, I think they're going to have a great team to watch um, as fans get in here. And uh, we're just going gonna, gonna to make them proud. I think we're really going to make them proud. Well, Ultron Jackson, you give this building and, and fans tons of memories. Uh, I, we could talk all day about the old days. I love yeah. I love talking about the old days, rolling into places, just rolling Charlotte and, you know, uh, UAB and just taking care of – Yeah, just taking care of – the. boy, you guys had some battles with Cincinnati. Yeah, they was ranked number one at the time. Yeah. And just to see the big old Oscar Robson sitting down on the floor is just like, wow, one of the greatest players of all time. So, it was fun times back then, and I think these guys are going to bring back the the, the fun memories again. Well, we're so glad to have you back here in the fold. I know you've been around, and so it's good to see you wearing the USF stuff and – being inside the building again. Thanks for spending some time with us. We appreciate it. Go Bulls. I love it. All right. What a great way to end this second show of the Brian Gregory Show. We appreciate Ultron coming by for a few minutes. And Mark, thanks once again to Bulls head coach Brian Gregory. I'm Jim Lighthall. We'll talk to you next time on the Brian Gregory Show on Bulls Unlimited.